happy, happy week of Christmas. Ho, 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 and a bottle of rum and all that other stuff. Hey, Ryan, I'm Brian. That's Ryan. What do LSU, the Dallas Cowboys, and the Ohio State Buckeyes all have in common? They all won? <laughs> they all have five regular season wins. Oh, okay. That's even better. <laughs> so, really, what we're saying is that the Cowboys and the LSU Tigers have as much right to be in the playoff as Ohio State does. Yeah, I guess. I guess you could make that argument. I, I don't know if the Cowboys would win. I don't think the Cowboys could beat Alabama, but they could be in. <laughs> I will say LSU's quality win is better than either one of Ohio State's quality wins. Now their five losses and the 500 yards a game they give up on defense could be a problem, but the committee doesn't seem to care about those kinds of things. So let's put LSU in the championship. They're, they're the defending champion. Shouldn't they get a chance to come back and defend? <laughs> you know I'm kidding. No, yeah, I, but, but your point about how ridiculous the playoff is is taken because um, – I I have pretty much gotten to the point I'm done with the college football playoff. I think it's a joke. Um, now, in, in fairness, I will say I do think Alabama's the best team, and it's not going to matter. I think, you know, ultimately the best team will win the national championship. But if I had known what was going to transpire with this four-team playoff, how, how many years have we had this now? Five, six years? Seven years, I believe. Okay, seven years, so it's been more than that. If I had known the direction this thing was going to go, Brian, I wish they never would have stopped with the BCS because right now I would rather have the BCS than the garbage that is the college football playoff. <laughs> it, it's not a playoff, number one. It's an elite invitational. And basically, and here's the thing, and it's not even about um, protecting a certain conference like the SEC. Because A and M didn't get any privilege out of that. That's it's exactly about, right. It's about, it's about protecting brands, and I would argue that. And this isn't even arguing that A and M should necessarily have made the field. But if if let's say Alabama had been had A and M's resume this year, do you think they would have left Alabama out and let Notre Dame in or Ohio State in over an Alabama with that same resume? I just feel like. It's all about protecting the name brands. And outside of Joe Burrow last year, uh, you know, having a season for the ages, basically every year we've been stuck with the same five or six schools. Um, and to me, the, the whole argument, well, we, we can't have a bigger playoff field because it makes the regular season less important. I don't think the regular season is important anyways. Ohio State didn't even have to play, basically, and they got in. Um, Clemson loses to Notre Dame. It didn't matter to them. And then Notre Dame gets throttled again on a big stage on national television, and they still get in. So those games didn't matter. So I'm just – I'm frustrated with the whole thing. Um, I'm frustrated that a team like Cincinnati can't at least have a chance. And, look, I, I, not to say that I think Cincinnati is one of the four best teams, but to me the point of a playoff is to let – is to try to give everyone a, a true chance to try to get in. And that's why, to me, if you're – the four-team playoff is, is not feasible anymore. I would rather go back to the two teams we had or they need to expand it because the, – um, and the argument that, well, uh, so-and-so team would get blown out – if Cincinnati would get blown out by Alabama or whoever you would put in that spot. Well, Alabama's going to blow, blow out almost anybody. That's so happening every year already. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to hear that argument. I, at least give them a chance because now – and one more thing and then I'll let you you talk. No, um, feel free. Go. Um, you know, Cincinnati now, they play, they're going to play Georgia. And I feel like they're just in a no-win situation because if they win, everyone's going to say, well, Georgia didn't want to be there. And if they lose, then everyone's going to say, see, they would have gotten annihilated and they don't deserve to be in there. I just feel like it doesn't give the non – uh, the non and I'm not even saying power conference teams because I think there are power conference teams that are getting screwed too. Um, I, I think it's just it's basically and I think your former colleague Tim Brando, I, he's been spot on. Um, it's basically an elite invitational and that's all it's become, and it's made it even harder. You've, we've we've seen so much like LSU losing guys. 
we've made it to where all that matters are these four playoff spots and nothing else matters. So what happens is more guys are transferring, kids are, opt are, are opting out. They don't want to play anymore because they, they, you know, when I was growing up, watching bowl games was a big deal. You wanted mm -hmm. to be in a bowl game. Now no one cares. It's all about those four spots. And pretty much every year, it's a rotation of about six schools um, getting in those four spots typically for six, seven teams. So I'm just bored with it, and uh, I I'm tired. I'm fed up with the whole thing. So that's my rant. Okay, we're out of time. Have a nice week. <laughs> Merry Christmas. No. <laughs> okay, here's, here's my dilemma, because I was one of these people that did not want this thing to go beyond four games. I, and I, from the I very, understood that, too. For the very, from the very beginning, because, and I'm an SEC guy, full disclosure, Okay, but there are times you tell me, and let's take this year for instance. If we were going to say conference champions only, then we're talking about a three and two Oregon team getting in over a Texas A and A and M team that didn't win the conference, but they're eight and one. Exactly. Okay? So I have a real problem with you saying automatically. Not you, but but people saying automatically conference champions ought to get in because there are some conferences that are just trash. Pac-12 being one of them. Every year they're trash. Yeah. Okay. So Big 12, I could argue, many years is trash. So that's one thing that I was very concerned about. I was concerned about a, a situation where a a mediocre conference champion might keep an Alabama team that was clearly one of the best teams in the country the year that Georgia got in. Right. And who ended up playing in the championship game, Alabama and Georgia and Alabama won. They did not win their conference that year, but right. they were clearly one of the four best teams. Okay. Yeah. So the conference championship thing, it, if you're going to do that, then we need to eliminate divisions, shrink the size of the conferences again, back to a manageable size, get rid of the divisions, and, and let's get back to what it was like in 1975, okay? Let the Big Eight be the Big Eight, bring the Southwest Conference back, get these conferences down to a size where good teams aren't going to get left out, first of all. That's not going to happen, all right? That's, that's, that ship sailed. Yeah. Secondly, I'm more aggravated about Ohio State getting in than I am about Notre Dame getting in because, and this is my reason, the Big Ten gamed this system from the very beginning. They, they gave Ohio State every possible advantage the entire year. First of all, they canceled the season, took a massive PR hit, got a revolt from their athletic directors, coaches, and players. They were staring at massive transfers. They were staring at getting destroyed recruiting-wise. And so, oh, all of a sudden, the science changed. We can have a season. So then they say, okay, but we only have that season if we start in late October, and you're going to have to sit out 21 days if you miss games. Okay? So then we get to the point where games get missed. And Ohio State, originally, who has to qualify by winning, playing at least six games to get in the championship, oh, the science changed. They can get in with five games now. Okay, so then they win the conference championship. Oh, the science changed. We can shrink that sit out uh, time from 21 days to 17 days now. Oh, the science changed. Bush. Okay, I'm sick of this. I'm sick of the Big Ten. They manipulated this thing. And so what they have now is a team that's played six games. Four, four to five less than every other team in the playoffs. Was well, not right? against Northwestern. And this team traditionally, when they've played full schedules, has found a way to gag against people like Iowa and Purdue. So if they had played a full season, there is nobody telling me that they couldn't have possibly tripped and fell and, and smashed their face in the street like they always do. OK, instead, what they get is four to five less games, four to five less physical beatings every week, four to five less stressful times, four to five rest. I mean, fresher bodies. And they go in with every possible advantage 
And the co college football playoff committee said, absolutely, because the science changed. You know, so that's, again, I, I use the word again, bullsh, okay? I am really fed up with that. Um, secondly, and if they win the national championship, how much of a farce is that going to be? And I don't they, think they will, but yeah. I mean, Alabama lost their starting center. They played 11 ball games. Yeah. Okay. They played half, almost twice the amount of games. That's what I'm talking about. You know, and then I heard somebody saying, well, Alabama had the same thing happen. No, Alabama played the SEC West. Wasn't their fault that the SEC West was down a little bit this year, but they also played cross divisional game against Georgia, and then they played Florida in the championship game. That's a pretty decent schedule. It's a hell of a lot better than Ohio State's schedule. Yeah. Okay. I'm just saying. So this crap. And I love Dabo Sweeney today. The poll came out and they released all the coaches' polls and how they voted. Dabo, Dabo's getting ready to play them and he voted them 11th. <laughs> now, you know, that takes balls of steel when you're going to put bulletin board material up against the team you're getting ready to play in the playoffs in two weeks. Yeah, major you go out such, you're, not even, you're not even a top 10 team. Brian Kelly had the greatest comments yesterday in the uh, college football selection show. He said, when you talk to coaches, not those fools that were sitting in that room, the clown show, as it's being called, at yeah. Grapevine, Texas. And I realized some of those guys were coaches, okay, but not all of them. But, when, but Brian Kelly said, when you're talking to coaches, games matter. The grind matters. The physical and mental stress of a full season Absolutely. matters. Dabo has said the same thing, and he's gotten crushed for it all year long. But he's right. You, the, the grind matters. Okay? And Ohio State did not have to grind like these other three teams did. All right? The argument between Notre Dame and, and Texas A&M, flip a coin. You know, I mean, really, honestly, when it gets right down to it, they were almost dead equal. Now, if you ask me who would win a ball game if they played each other, I'd pick A&M, okay? But, that, but I think it would be a really close ball game. So I don't know that A&M got screwed, okay? It's just that it's just that A&M's terrible loss happened in the second week of the season. Notre Dame's terrible loss happened two days ago. And, and it was and terrible. I it was brutal. Yeah, and, and I, my thing, look, I don't want to necessarily say A&M got screwed either. What I am saying, and I, I stand by 100%, if A&M was Alabama, maybe even Georgia, I think they get in. And I maybe. feel like this whole thing is just it, every year it protects. There's a few. There's a few. What? I mean, Ohio State got protected. Ohio State would not be – if that was Indiana with Ohio State's resume – Indiana would not have got in. Indiana's no, in the no. Now goal. that that I totally agree with. I will say this: Alabama had a great record last year, didn't get in the playoffs, but they lost two ball yeah. games. They, they lost, lost two, two ball games. games. They lost and, two, and two close. The funny thing this year, and, and what made this hard, we really didn't have like there was not a team that we could all say, yeah, they they true they deserve. I mean, it was hard really to pick three and four that that really were head oh. and shoulders. Uh, and that again, and that is why I don't see a problem with expanding to eight because to me, there is not a big difference. Now, I believe Bama and Clemson are better, but I don't think there's a big difference between three and eight. No, I don't think no. there's a big difference between three and 12, to be quite honest. I agree. Totally and that's agree. why, so I feel like then those, a Cincinnati, A&M should get a chance. And, you know, and I, I get it's always been we can't water it down. But every other college sport, they have these playoff, these tournament fields. And the reason I love the NCAA basketball tournament, the reason I love the baseball tournament, I even love college baseball tournament, is because it's not for the, the regional final and the final four. It's because I get to see the little guy get a chance. And do they win all the time? No. But they get a shot because Cincinnati or BYU or whoever it's going to be, the every, any year, whether it's Central Florida, they should get a chance if if they do their job and they run their table because they can't just go schedule all these power five schools because they don't want to play them. So I just think if we're going to have a real playoff, there needs to, if they earn it, 
they need to have a chance. If they get blown out, they get blown out. But it's no different than watching Alabama blow out Notre Dame in a few weeks. No, and that's exactly what's going to happen. Alabama's just going to absolutely steamroll Notre Dame in a couple of weeks. Clemson, Ohio State might be a good game for a little while. But honestly, if Trevor Lawrence, if, they, if, if Clemson doesn't get hit by a COVID outbreak, I, I don't see. The way Justin Field played in the championship game against Northwestern, he was awful. He was awful. Now, his best receiver was out. I know they were down 22, but he played terrible. He played yeah. as bad a game as I've ever seen him play. Yeah, um, he, was not, he was not impressive. I mean, he took himself completely out of the Heisman race on Saturday because of that. The, the thing that I am, again, most worried about, and this is, again, I struggle with this. I'm very conflicted. I'm coming around more and more, but it's mostly because of the clowns in the room than it is about the competition on the field because yeah. their criteria is hitting a moving target. I mean, every week it's something different. Well, we respect Cincinnati. No, you don't. You dropped them two, three weeks in a row behind yeah. two and three lost teams. We respect those, those uh, group of five teams. No, you don't. Louisiana still ranked like 20th, and they beat the hell out of Iowa State. Yeah, and that, 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 there's no rhyme or reason to anything they do. And then Ohio yeah. State doesn't play, and That's, they don't ever move. Now, Nothing now if, you want to, if you want to talk about protecting a brand, point at Ohio State, because they gave them a free pass. They let them skate into the playoff Yeah, and, and had no argument with it, okay? And, and I'm sorry, but, but basically they – they walked in through the back door and didn't have to do what everybody else did. Now, now a lot of that I blame on the Big Ten. Yeah. You know, Ohio State want to their credit. They said from day one, we want to play, and they pushed and pushed. Players were screaming and yelling, and, and they finally – the science changed. And, yeah. you know, then suddenly, amazingly enough, it was a miracle. It was a Christmas miracle. They were allowed to, to continue to play, but their stupid season didn't start till dang near November. So yeah. I, I, I'm with you. I, the anger is real, okay? And, I, and, you know, and the funny thing in all this is, because I even thought about this when I was getting so fired up. I mean, ultimately, look, you want the best team to win uh, the national championship, and I think that will still happen. Um, I think my problem is there's, there's teams that are getting a shot that don't deserve it over in other schools like Ohio State. And that's I, – I want to see it corrected because the people in that room – they're not, you know, they're not getting it right. Uh, and, you know, I, I just want to be able to see certain years, like when TCU and Baylor had their great mm -hmm. years. Th those are once-in-a-lifetime seasons. No, they got programs. And for them not even to be able to get a chance to at least prove it, to me, that hurts college. That hurts. That, that was a brand protection move. Yeah. Totally. Because TCU and Baylor are not going to bring big eyeballs right. to the screen. Totally agree with you on that one. The thing that I've always said up until today, when people would say, we want our opportunity to get in, we, should, we deserve our, our, no, you don't. You don't put the same kind of money into your program that Alabama and Clemson does. You don't hire good coaches like those people do. You don't recruit as hard as those people do. You know, get better. And, and, I, and I'll point to a classic example of somebody who did that, Notre Dame. I'm not a Notre Dame fan at all, okay? And I usually believe that Notre Dame gets every benefit of the doubt over everybody else. You want to talk about brand protection, Notre Dame has been getting it since the beginning of time, okay? But Brian Kelly himself said after the beatdown they took in 2012 to Alabama, he knew that he had to change everything about his program. He started recruiting Bigger, stronger offensive and defensive linemen. He says, we've got to get more physical. We can't, we can't win these games if we don't. So he, he adjusted. Mario Kist Cristobal goes up to Oregon. Oregon, boy, I mean, high speed, high octane offense gets in a playoff game, gets crushed. Okay? Mario Cristobal comes in. He's been on the Alabama staff. He goes up there getting bigger, stronger offensive and defensive lines. They're suddenly a physical football team again. You know, that's what needs to happen in the Big 12. Oklahoma finally starting to improve because guess what? Some defense matters. You right, know? yeah, they actually played some defense. In the uh, that's what I'm talking. It only took them like nine years to figure that out, but they're doing it, okay? So part of me says 
you don't deserve a, a, a shot at the, you don't deserve a seat at the table because you're not doing the same things. You're not making the same commitment. USC, there's no reason you shouldn't be in the same position Alabama's in every year. But you don't commit the same resources to your coaching and your recruiting and your facilities and that, that those, those teams do. All that being said, I understand it's hurting the game. I understand it's hurting the game. I understand that by week four, the people in the West Coast have checked out. Yeah. Because they're done. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I will say, I'll fault them for this. Their precious Rose Bowl means more to them than their playoff. You know, so a lot of that's their own fault. The Big 12. Now you want to say, okay, well, they play, they play each other. They all play, they all play. They've got a real true champion. The thing that's so stupid about the Big 12 is that then they turn around and play a championship game that right. renders that entire season moot and they kill themselves. Right, because yeah, technically Iowa State was the outright champion. But that's what I'm talking about. And they have so, to play another game against the team they already beat. So the stupidity of that is, you know, it, it, it negates all the good that you, the, the claim that you can make, one true champion. No, it's not. You had one true champion at the end of the regular season. And now yeah, you got to yeah. play a playoff game because you want dough. So there's a, there, man, everything about this is so flawed. And I know this is COVID-19 year. And I, and I realize that there are a lot of things, we, you know, and, and everybody kept saying before the season started, don't think about, what's fair this year because fair is not going to happen well by god it didn't <laughs> it didn't happen at all the thing i'm most disturbed about i think the four we all knew who the top four teams were going to be we knew that three weeks ago yeah i, I would say it's been longer than that i mean yeah. nothing has changed listen unless somebody tripped up and again just fell on their face we knew three weeks ago what was going to what the four were going to be and that included the, the race between Notre Dame and A&M. We knew that that, was, that vote was going to go to Notre Dame, okay? Right. But what's really ridiculous is when you go down that list in the top 25 and you start seeing, you know, Coastal Carolina and um, Louisiana and Cincinnati, you know, getting jumped on weeks where they didn't play or they're still undefeated and they're still getting jumped. And Louisiana's gone in and beat the co-champion yeah. of the Big 12. <laughs> They didn't. They thumped them. It, yeah, it wasn't at, like they squeaked out a last second field goal. At Iowa State, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what really just scorched my shorts was watching the the rankings. How in the world is Georgia still in the top ten? Yeah. You know should. how did they, how were they? How could anybody have put them there when they lost big time to Alabama and then got beat by Florida? You know, and then and then by the, by all measures, because Florida lost to LSU, that should have dropped Georgia. Right. Okay. And again, I'm an SEC guy. There's no way Georgia should be a top ten team. Yeah, agreed. Not not over these other schools that are undefeated, or ranked ahead of those folks. So, the, this, I don't know if it was this particular committee was more inept than any that we've ever seen before, or Barta did a worse job of uh, explaining himself. Uh, it was just – the anger on Twitter was was palpable. <laughs> you know, of course, the Aggies were losing their minds. But, guys, I'm sorry. Somebody's – there's always going to be a fifth team. And, and listen, if you expand to eight, there's going to be a ninth and tenth team that's going to be really irritated every year. It happened when they expanded the NCAA tournament to 68 teams, 69, pissed off. Because they didn't yeah, make it in. I guess my argument, and I, I agree, because I mean, even every year at the basketball tournament, we have a field of 68, and we still have teams complaining. Um, my fear, my fear, Ryan, is that that's that's what happened to the NCAA basketball season. That season is completely irrelevant, and that's the one thing I do fear. And I, and again, I'm I'm extremely conflicted at this point. I used to be staunch for and no more. I'm starting to loosen up on that a little bit, but man, yeah, the, the college basketball season, unless you're a mid-major, it just doesn't even matter. If you're 500 in your conference, you're getting in. Um, and, you know, it, look, I, I understand that argument. I guess my, my thing is it's, but it's two completely different. It's apples and oranges because the basketball season is so much longer. Um, we don't even pay attention uh, the national media doesn't even pay attention to basketball until we get 
that, late in the conference season. That's what I don't want to see happen with college and, football. Uh, and college football, to me, there's there's just not enough games that it could be the same. Because I would argue right now a lot of these games don't matter anyways. And with the, the way that bowl games have become so irrelevant, I mean, that's, that's, sad. Why, that's why we're seeing kids opt out. They don't even think it's important anymore. No. So to me, the more teams that can make the playoff, it makes it more valuable of a season because more teams are going to think they still have a chance. Because, yes, the ninth – if it, let's say we go to eight teams – the ninth team's going to be ticked off, but I can live with a ninth team getting left out a lot more than I can a fifth team because I just think there's more opportunity. And if you couldn't at least submit yourself in the top eight, you know, I, you know, sorry, do it, do better next time. But I just feel like the way it's structured right now with the four, it's not enough. It's hurting college football. We've learned in 2020 with our own jobs, with everything you, the, what's one of the words we've learned this year, pivot. And mm -hmm. I feel like college football has to pivot and figure out the sport is hurting and it, it's, it's, things are just different and they they have to make a change. And cause quite frankly, if they don't go to eight, I would rather just go back to the BCS because this four team playoff is a joke. So. Well, I'll just say this year, <laughs> I'll watch, but I'm not the least bit excited about watching Alabama beat the hell out of Notre Dame. I'm just not. I, I'm I don't not, think I'll even watch that game because I have zero interest in watching that I, game. I, I'll watch because I, I, again, I'm an SEC guy. I, you know, I, and so I'm going to watch. And I, and honestly, I love watching Notre Dame get the hell beat out of them. Okay, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It, it, I take great pleasure in that. Um, but at the same time, um, I, I'm very concerned about what this, what's what's becoming of this game because that that co the committee is a joke. They don't have clear criteria. There's no transparency. It's just a uh, movie. You, you know, hey, if you want to if you want to go demand a recount, let's quit wasting time on the presidential presidential election. It's been over for a month now. Let's go after the CFP <laughs> and to get some real transparency there. That's what I'd like to hear. Um, the last thing, and then we can move on for this few short minutes about the NFL. Uh, Army nine and two not getting into a bowl game is criminal, and I understand they they I understand the machinations of what bowls are now, and all of them are tied into conference contracts and obligations, and and Army had the the terrible misfortune of being linked to the Independence Bowl, and then the Independence Bowl's conference link, which which was Pac-12, only had two teams that were going to go to bowl games this year, so they lost their they lost their team. And rather than go out and get another team, or apparently they couldn't get another team, they just canceled the bowl. Army, that, that is a criminal thing that these guys do not play in a bowl game. And you've got two and three win teams, including a bunch of them from the SEC, playing in bowl games. South Carolina has zero business being in a bowl game. Okay? Yeah. I'm sorry. That's, that's just it's Mississippi State. That's horrendous that they're in a bowl game and Army isn't. Now, Listen, people say, well, they ought to just give up their bowl bid and give it to Army. There's millions of dollars riding on that. The SEC is not going to let that happen, okay? Yeah. Uh, they should if you want to do the, the PR thing, but because of the amount of money that's been lost this year by all these college programs, they're going to get every dime they can get. So, But, but that's just criminal that Army's not – at least at the, for the moment, Army is not in the playoff. Now, what you – what I expect will happen is going to be what's happened throughout this entire year. The odds of somebody coming up with a COVID outbreak in their team and having to pull out of the playoff game, it is bound to happen. Okay. And that's where the, you use hope. I don't hope anybody gets COVID. Okay. But what I'm saying is that you, you hope that if that were to happen, the timing would be such that the army team, hadn't already been sent home because they're, they're plant They're staying on campus this week, just in the hopes of the phone ringing. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just a terrible thing. I mean, and, and listen, somebody suggested, Hey, play Navy again. Jeff Monken today said, I'll play anybody. Our kids deserve a bowl game. Yeah. You know, nobody. And then I heard, even saw people saying, well, put them against an FCS team, the Citadel. And I don't want to see that. I, you know, they deserve a better bowl. Yeah, they win nine games. They don't. No. Hey, play, play a subdivision team. But this just speaks to an even bigger issue that, to me, college football is broken. 
there's no one, there's no actual leader. It's everybody doing their own thing. We don't, we don't look, how, how often do we actually get what could be the best bowl matchups? Well, we can't because they're not locked in with this conference. So some right. crappy team from this conference gets in. It just shows another layer of why I'm fed up with college football. And as someone that has always loved it, look, I don't like saying this. I, I'm, I'm tired of it. Like, I have zero excitement for the bowl season. Um, I'm, I'm really not excited at all about the playoff. I'll watch the national championship game just because. But um, something has to change, and I don't know if they will. And, and I'll just point this out and, as an argument because I love college football. I love college football way more than the pros, okay, because of the various things you're complaining about with college football. It's the same teams in the NFL every year. I mean, you might get one or two outliers, but what happens to those teams? They get crushed in the first round and they're gone. So you knew up until this year, finally, the Patriots aren't in, okay? But they missed playoffs one time since Tom Brady's been their quarterback, and that was a, a 10 and 6 season, you know? So it's, just, it's the same usual suspects. You can pretty much count on, you can pretty much pick. You know Green Bay is going to be there. You know San, uh, the Saints are going to be there. You know well, Baltimore and the Steelers and the Patriots are all going to be there. And, and the chance of somebody coming in from the outside is a once-in-a-million thing like the Eagles winning the Super Bowl a few years ago. I, so I, I get where you're coming from, but I could kind of say I'm bored with the NFL because of that. Yeah, and I can see that. But at least those teams had a chance. And the Eagles – This is true. They've played. The Eagles were – no one thought they were going to win with Nick Foles, uh, and they did. As a Bronco fan, no one thought the Broncos had a chance. And uh, when they played the Green Bay Packers in 98, they were 13-and-a-half point underdogs, and they beat them. They had the chance. And Denver was a wild card. There have been multiple wild cards yeah. that have won the Super Bowl. So, again, that's, that, that's my point. Those teams wouldn't have got in with the college system. Right. And I just think it's broken. It takes away some of the excitement. And I would have, I would have loved to have seen a Baylor or TCU a few years ago when they had the run. I would have Absurd. loved A and M get a chance. I would have loved to have seen Cincinnati get a chance. Um, and like you said, is it normally going to be the usual suspects? Probably, but every once in a while, you you catch that lightning in a bottle, and uh, maybe someone has a Joe Burrow that takes them on a run. Cam Newton did it at Auburn, where it's out mm -hmm. of nowhere, and. You know, that's that's what I, I love about sports is the chance to see something you didn't expect. So, And that's fair enough. And, and I, I can't – I really can't disagree with anything you're saying. Um, I'm, again, I'm, I'm moving my position a little bit more every day. Uh, I still don't trust – I never trusted the committee. I always preferred the BCS computers to pick and the And you team. were right. You were absolutely right. Because I knew – I knew these people came into that room with agendas, okay, as opposed to computers, yes, yes, computers pick the teams. If you want to pick eight, great. I'd rather the computer pick them, okay, yeah. because I don't trust the people in that room, and I haven't since day one because they all have agendas, and every year you can look at somebody that got screwed. Yeah. Okay? All right, Cowboys real quick. Hey, they're still in it. <laughs> the only thing I will I, – I watched the game – the only thing that I saw in that ball game, two things. First of all, San Francisco's terrible too because they're just completely decimated by injuries, yeah. as is Dallas. Yeah. The thing that was encouraging about Dallas yesterday, two things. They're starting to see some players, young players that are stepping up that look like they can play. Uh, in the secondary, the interceptions they got from Donovan Wilson and Anthony Brown. Um, we saw C.D. Lamb is a stud. Okay, he's just a stone stud. And because their salary cap hamstrung for so many years because of Zeke Elliott's contract, thank God for Tony Pollard yesterday, by the way, um, it's going to take it, – the roster's going to have to be filled with a bunch of first contract players who actually show something. And you're starting to see some of those players, you know, Connor McGovern kind of showing that he can play on the offensive line. Um, there, there are some signs – that there are some players that are stepping up that may deserve a look next year. You know, Gallimore at defensive line is, a, is another stud. I think he's going to be a really good player because they're going to have to go cheap and young to compete next year. Um, love to see them getting turnovers, but San Francisco's terrible. Nick Mullen is terrible. Yes. So, uh, and yet, 
And yet, if Washington loses two and Dallas wins two, Dallas wins the division. Yep. <laughs> do we and, do we really want to see that? And That's like Notre ago, Dame. Do we really want to see this? So two weeks ago, I never I didn't even think this was gonna be possible. Alex Smith getting hurt, um, I think kind of put gave the Cowboys some life because I mean there's no guarantee, and depending if he if with Haskins at quarterback, there's no guarantee Washington wins either of their last two games. Do you trust Dwayne Haskins with your franchise? <laughs> no, and and the Cowboys. Now I will also say though, I think the Cowboys got are at a bit bit at a disadvantage that Wentz got benched because Jalen Hurts looks good, and now the Cowboys have to play Jalen Hurts, and the Eagles are playing much better. Uh, they they had a close game yesterday. They beat the Saints. Uh, Jalen Hurts looks like I don't see Wentz getting his job back. He's not right, and so that's going to be the the, the uh, the game there. Can they beat the Eagles with Jalen Hurts? Because Hurts is playing like a guy that could be a franchise quarterback. And I know it's only two weeks, but he looks good. Sometimes you can just tell, and yeah. he looks like he's got it. So you know, he he's not your classic quarterback, and he's he never was when he was at Alabama, but he won. He never yeah, was when yeah. he was at Oklahoma. He wasn't Baker Mayfield. He wasn't Kyler Murray, but he won, and he ends yep. up being a Heisman finalist. The dude just finds a way to win. Um, you know, and I think about quarterbacks over the t- course of time, you know, guys like Billy Kilmer. I mean, dude could barely walk, and yet he would be he would will the Redskins to, to wins. You know, I mean, go figure. So – you're right. He's he's definitely an X factor in this thing. Andy Dalton, I'll still take is the best quarterback in this terrible division right now, and he played played really solid football yesterday. Um, you know, and and the fact that he gets the ball out of his hand so quickly because the offensive line then is shaky helps him a lot. Um, the other one game, thing I want to one thing I will say, Brian, about that game yesterday. You had talked about the young guys. When I was watching that game yesterday, I really started thinking, if you think big picture for this team, um, for, I mean, look, even if they somehow make the playoffs, look, this is not a playoff team. You looked at the contributions yesterday, and you look at some of the guys making the money they're making. After watching that game yesterday, if you're the Cowboys, do you really need or want Ezekiel Elliott, and do you need Amari Cooper? Uh, mm-hmm. Because they're taking a – Huge, you've given them huge contracts. Um, I don't think they're needed. If you get Dak Prescott back next year, I mean, if they could unload those somehow um, and get some other pieces, I think that next year they could be right back in it. I just don't think they, they didn't need to pay some of these guys. The rational thinker in you is a genius. The unfortunate thing is we don't have rational thinkers running the Cowboys. Jerry runs the Cowboys. Jerry's more interested in jersey sales than he is in putting together a solid football team. And so that's why you got Zeke Elliott now, who is, I'm telling you, he looks like he's completely out of gas. And you saw the difference with Tony Pollard in the ball game yesterday. They still didn't run the ball well, but he popped a 40-yarder that, that literally won the ball game for him. And he also had a lot of catches out of the backfield, yeah. which is kind of sort of the new NFL running game as well. So That's, that's the point. You don't have to have. For, you know, I'm watching Gallimore last night running for the Giants. You don't have to have first-round picks to, to run the football, you know, yeah. and have a good effective running game. Uh, two other things. Chiefs, Saints yesterday, Patrick Mahomes continues to just be ridiculous. Even though they're not playing – the Chiefs are not playing well. No, it's funny you say that. I texted a couple friends yesterday that watching Patrick Mahomes – and I, I'm not saying this even to be funny. I mean it 100%. It's like having a cheat code. <laughs> um, because it is. They're, like, like, plays will be completely – the Saints defense the, – the thing watching that game, the Saints defense would play a play perfectly defensively. Mm-hmm. And he would somehow avoid the rush, roll right, and makes a throw that you would never want your quarterback to throw. But because it's Mahomes, you know it's going to work because yeah. he just – and he throws it across his body uh, 20 yards the other way. And you're, and you're the defense. You're just like, what do we do? And that's why after, after that game yesterday, and I do think Breeze, and Breeze even said after the game that – He was hurting. 
yeah, he um, he didn't look comfortable. Uh, he just and he looked he looked rusty. Obviously. Well, I'm gonna tell you what though, if you watch the game, um, and there were a number of times he Romo would show it, they would show the the all 22. Yeah, nobody was getting open. Right. And yeah. So they were talk they were talking about how. I watched the NBC guys last night saying he just looked rusty. He looked like he looked confused. He, he wasn't, he had nobody to throw to. There was nobody I, yeah. getting any separation. Um, I don't, I don't think it was, he looked confused. I do think he looked a little rusty. Some of his throws. Yeah. Um, but all that being said, the chiefs have gone into new Orleans and won. they blew out Baltimore and Baltimore. They handled Buffalo easily in Buffalo. Um, I don't see, uh, I just don't see anyone beating them this year. Um, if Mahomes, Mahomes is, is the ultimate cheat code. He can make any, it doesn't matter what you do. The other thing that the Saints did that cost them, and it's why the Broncos actually had a chance to upset them a, a couple weeks ago, you, um, you cannot go three and out against the Chiefs. No. If you go three and out, uh, you ought as well, like to me, if you have more than one three and out, you're not going to win. You can't do it. And that's why Denver hung into the fourth quarter. Um, the Saints went three and out, I think, the first three series. You can't do that. And then the Saints ended up getting back in the game for a little bit. But Mahomes eventually is going to figure you out. Yeah. So if you're going three and out, three and out, three and out to start the game, you're just giving Patrick too much leash to figure you out. They, they are so thin at wide receiver right now, and they had three guys on the field that they had literally brought up from the practice squad over the weekend. So the no Saints Michael were really – Yeah, I mean, they, they literally – they had one returning regular – at wide receiver. The other three were, I mean, I'm, they were pushing carts at Walmart 24 hours <laughs> prior to the game. So, I mean, it, it, it just, and it looked like it. So poor Drew Brees looked so frustrated because he dropped back to throw and there was nothing open yeah. uh, over and over and over again. And yes, he was hurting. It was just a perfect storm. The only thing I'll say about the chiefs, um, if Clyde Edwards Hilaire is out for a long time, that could be a major blow for them. And boy, that injury looked horrible yesterday. Uh, yeah, he didn't look good. Lit, that looked awful. And um, whenever you hear a uh, hip, yeah. um, that makes you nervous. Um, again, I'm I'm hoping it's not it's not as bad as it looked. Um, but yeah, it definitely made you nervous. And it's also why the Chiefs were smart to sign Le'Veon Bell as insurance in case you never know what happens. So, one last thing: uh, the, the Cleveland Flippin' Browns actually look like a team that might be able to do something in the playoffs because they pl they run the football and they play good defense. And Baker and Mayfield can do – as as long as the running game is going and he doesn't get pressured a whole lot, he, he can make the throws. Yeah, and it shows you what uh, competent coaching can do. It You know, coaching – the most important sport for coaching is football. Um, yeah. And you just see – uh, they they had the talent last year. They they had started putting pieces together, but like you said, they wouldn't commit to the run. Um, and Stefanski's done a great job. They're playing good defense. Chubb and Kareem Hunt are a as good as a back uh, tandem you can have in the backfield. And because of the play action, and because they improved at both tackle positions in the off season, uh, Mackay Becton's been good. Um, uh, you know, they've, or who did they draft? I'm sorry, it wasn't Beckton. I um, can't remember which one they drafted. They drafted one of the studs. Um, and then they, they added another one in free agency. They look like a different team. They can run the ball. They can protect Baker. So it's, it's going to be fun. All right. Um, I don't know if we're going to talk next week, but uh, in the meantime, I'll just tell everybody uh, we appreciate you uh, watching. Hope you have a very Merry Christmas. Uh, yeah, despite all the vitriol and the hatred and the poison we spewed today, uh, <laughs> uh, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. <laughs> and I it hate you, college football. <laughs> I hate you, college football playoff committee. And I hope you get cold in your stocking. But the rest of you people, I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Have a Merry Christmas, Ryan. Same to you, bud. Ryan Peterson, Brian Houston, Brian and Ryan will post this on Tuesday mornings. Be sure to watch it, uh, comment, share, burn it, whatever you'd like to do. And uh, we'll talk to you next time.